We're Big Joe and Laura on Mix 95.7, Grand Rapids' best mix. Welcoming you to Thursday, March 7th. Good morning, Laura. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. Speaking of last night, I got to go out and uh, hang out. It was um, the Laugh Fest kickoff. One of the cool events was going on at Creston Brewing, and it was the Trivia Night of the Stars. I say that loosely because I was there. Well, I mean, I, I think the trivia part is more loose than the star thing for you. How did you do? I, I helped out. There was like three rounds with 30 questions each, like really quick stuff. And I knew a lot of the music. There was like a beat. There was a mashup where they took a beat of one song and a vocal of the other. And it's like, everybody's like, I don't know what it is. And I'm like, ooh, I just zoned in, Laura. I closed my eyes. A little bit of smoke came out of my ears. And I nailed it. It well, was the Bee Gees and Gwen Stefani. Well, and honestly, like, that's the genius thing for you because you have Big Joe's jukebox. So you're like, right? yeah, I'm good at naming songs now. So, like, this is where I come in clutch on the, the trivia team. So it was just fun. We uh, Dave from Jenison said hi. I sent you a photo last night. But we, we love getting to meet you. Like, if you actually listen to the show, if you don't call in or leave a comment on Facebook, there's really no interaction, right? No. We, and we love to hear from you. We love, we love to interact with you. So if you're out there and... You want to say hi this morning? Please do. Send us a DM in the Mix 95.7 app. Hit us up on social media. Look up Big Joe and Laura or Mix 95.7 GR, and you can find us anywhere you are. Okay. Um, one quick question before, I guess, to kind of get the show officially going. Okay. I, I am starving because, like, I haven't eaten yet. Have you eaten? No, it's only 6.04 in the morning. I don't generally eat this early. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, I'd like a snack. I'm hungry. I have in my possession, in our work fridge, I have a thing of chili from Wendy's from Tuesday. Uh, so today's Thursday. Okay. And then from Sunday, I had brunch at uh, Cherie, and I love that place. They have these cheesy potatoes. Oh, they're so good. And I was going to try to eat those uh, throughout the morning. Do you think both of those, what? You're giving me that look. The Wendy's sketches me out. I'm not going to lie. I chili? Love, I love Wendy's. Yeah, but their chili's already made of old stuff, so that if you um, eat it old, you're eating old, old stuff, and that feels but, a little sketchy. But doesn't chili get good, like, a couple of days later, it's better? When it's made at home with, like, real ingredients, but, like, old cheeseburger patties with some sauce on them, I don't, I mean, it, it could be good. I don't know. I don't trust it. That's 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 all you, buddy. Okay. Well, I'm just letting you know. I'm gonna I'm gonna roll the dice and see how we go today. And uh, so, if the show is only me by the end, you know what happened. It was called food poisoning. It's time for Big Joe and Laura's Need to Know News on Mix 95.7. The U.S. Postal Service on Wednesday unveiled a new stamp that commemorates former First Lady Betty Ford. The stamp actually looks really good. Like, if I was getting my driver's license photo, this is what I'd want. I was going to say, it looks like one of those presidential paintings like you see in the White House where it's all nice and pretty. Like, whoever did it should genuinely feel good about what they've created. The stamp, if you'd like to pick it up, is set to be issued on April 5th. These are the only stamps. Stamps I'm using going forward. Thank you. Are the West Michigan Whitecaps changing their name? The answer is yes and no. I didn't even get a say in this. Was there a vote or something? No, and it's not really a permanent thing, but according to a report from a website that keeps track of special jerseys, like whenever teams have a, a limited edition jersey. Oh, yeah, like when the Whitecaps were the bung hammers. Yeah, which they <laughs> are doing again this year, by the way. So if you like that jersey, great, but you may want to pick up their Malamote Oat Milkers jersey that they'll be wearing for one day only sometime probably in June. Okay, I don't know much about oat milking. <laughs> well, you don't have to. The reason that they're going to change their name to the Oat Milkers is because their entire league signed a deal with the brand Oatly, who makes oat milk. And so, the rumor is is that every team in the entire league at some point during the month of June is going to have to change their name to the Malamo Oat Milkers for a day at some point and play with those jerseys on. They've not released the jerseys yet. I kind of imagined what I think it's going to look like. You can check that out inside the Mixed Study Five Seven app. If you want to see my terrible rendering of what I believe this jersey might look like, but would you wear a West Michigan Oat Milkers jersey if you had the opportunity, Joe? Yeah, give me a three or four X. I'll slap that on my back. Honestly, I want one too. So I hope this happens. It's all still kind of in the rumor phase, but they're very, very solid rumors. So don't be surprised when it gets announced soon. And your final need to know news story. We're going over to the east side of the state. A dog named Aries was involved in a car crash. Don't worry, the dog was not driving, but uh, it was oh, no. in the vehicle. Happened near Detroit. And 
then took off from the accident and ran over a mile to where she just was her doggy daycare for help. I had the windows down because Aries likes to hang her head out. And as soon as there was that smack, as soon as I felt and heard it, almost instantaneously, she was out the window. She was like, this is where I go and this is where I stay. She just seemed like she knew what to do. She was literally knocking on the door <laughs> like, can somebody let me in? I can't believe it. I mean, like, of all the places for this dog to run, how did it know where daycare was? You know what this story tells me is that this dog's smart and it obviously knew where it's going, but if your dog runs away from you like my dogs did in the past, they didn't want to be with you, right? Like, if the dog's nowhere to go, they're always <laughs> like, well, I'm lost. I guess I'm not going to find my way home. I'm going to go hang out with my friends instead. That's your Need to Know News on Mix 95.7. I didn't even know this was a real name that people have in real life, but it almost ruined my day. Hey, we're Big Joe and Laura here on Mix 95, 7 Grand Rapids Best Mix. And recently, uh, my husband James and I went to go get breakfast somewhere not in Grand Rapids, so this is not uh, someone here locally that I'm shaming for having a similar name to me, but uh, my my husband James and I went to a place that had those screens where you you order your food, you type your name in, and then they they call your name when your food's ready, right? Yeah, a little kiosk. I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, exactly. So our food gets ready. He hears his name called. He goes and gets his breakfast, and then he hears my name being called right afterwards. He's like, "Oh, perfect! I'll grab both of ours." I was like, "Thanks for doing that. I appreciate it." He had to almost fight a woman for my breakfast because her name was Mora. And my name is Laura. <laughs> to be fair, those do sound similar if you're you're half paying attention. Yeah, so this Mora lady, bless her heart, tries to steal my breakfast because, of course, she thinks that her breakfast has been called up. And her and my husband have to have this little weird exchange of like, no, 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 Laura, not Mora. I, again, I didn't know Mora was a real name. It almost feels like someone like just changed the first letter of my name just to kind of mess with me in a weird scenario. Well, the thing is, too, it's always interesting to me because, okay, it's it's not necessarily weird that there's somebody named Laura like you and there's somebody named Mora like the lady that tried to steal your breakfast. But what are the odds that you're at the same place at the same time with similar sounding names? Yeah, I tried to order breakfast and have it called out. I mean, insane. And it's not the only time that someone's had a similar name as me. I, You know, what? in high school, I was in a journalism class where I was in with three separate Laura. There were three of us in this class. Okay. Two of us had similar last names. One of us had an, she had an entirely different last name. So one Laura, we just called her by her last name. She was fine. But I was Laura H.A. because Hardy. Okay. This other Laura, her last name was Hoffman. We both had the same middle name. So they had to call us La Ha and La Ho for the rest of the school year because that was the only way if you yelled Laura, you didn't get three people turning around. How do they around even allow that in school? I, because I guess because it was a specialized class, it's not like it's like English where you have enough people teaching it. It's it's the only newspaper class in the entire school that I was in. La Ha. And so they called La-ho. me La Ha. Poor La Ho. I feel bad for her because of her last name just being unfortunate enough that she had to be La Ho for the rest of her senior year of high school. But I, basically... Our question this morning, when did having a name similar to yours or just like yours make things difficult, ruin your day, or just really confuse people? We want to hear from you at 616-600-0957. Again, that's 616-600-0957. It's time for Big Joe and Laura's Need to Know News on Mix 95.7. There's a new bill aimed to rename a section of M6 in honor of a tow truck driver who was hit by a vehicle and killed last year. The House Bill 5552 would name a part of M6 in Kent County starting around Kalamazoo Avenue and continuing east to 60th Street. It'll be called the Keegan Spencer Memorial Highway. He was tragically killed last November when he was trying to save that dog, if you remember, that was trapped in the median. I hope this absolutely passes because... What a sweet person this guy was to risk his life for this dog, and it costs nothing to do this, so let's honor him the right way. Okay, in case you're like me and forgot, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but this weekend we lose an hour of sleep thanks to daylight saving time. It was so funny, and Laura's like, we're losing an hour? I'm like, wait, you're just now realizing this? I just didn't realize it was this weekend. It was so <laughs> soon. I feel like we just got the hour just like a few days ago, it feels. Maybe that's just my mom brain. But thankfully, Burger King is trying to make you feel a little better about it if you're bummed like I am. They're going to help make that lack of sleep easier by providing free breakfast throughout the week. Now, on Sunday morning, you can get a free croissant, which, which is my favorite thing at Burger King when you do breakfast. Have you ever had one of those? Oh, dude. BK breakfast is on Saturday morning when like my dad would pick me up to be the cool dad. Yeah. 
yeah. That was the best. Yes, croissant, French toast sticks. Nom, 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 nom. Well, good news. If you like those French toast sticks, that's Monday's free breakfast item. And then Woo! on Tuesday, you get yourself a free orange juice. So it goes uh, throughout the week. I think it does start to ramp down throughout the week. But at least Sunday, you get that croissant, which, and that's a pretty good deal for the lack of sleep. Oh. Uh-huh. And your final need to know news story, head into Canada. A man was paid by an online streamer in Canada to drive his car off of a dock into 12 feet of water. Oh, what? Why? Because he's, I don't know, dumb and wanted money. He was then arrested by the police. Listen to this poor tow truck driver talking about what happened when he showed up. How was I going to get in there? You know, I'm not a diver. I'm not a professional diver. I don't know how to dive. Plus the weather, the coldness. You know, I would have got hypothermia if I jumped in last night to get it. Basically, that car would have jammed everybody up for the day. They would have lost money. And all because of what? To have your face on YouTube? Really? Oh my gosh, people are so stupid. They will do anything for internet clout. I would actually, with our station vehicle, I wouldn't mind driving it into Lake Michigan, but that's for different reasons. Well, I mean, listen, it's it's trying. That's your Need to Know News on Mix 95.7. We are Big Joe and Laura, Mix 95.7. And recently, my husband, James, and I went to go get breakfast somewhere, and we typed our names into the kiosk. They shouted James's name out, then they shouted my name out. And when my husband went to go get my food, he almost had to uh, kind of get into a fight with a woman who swore that my breakfast was hers because her name was Mora, and they yelled out, Laura, which is my name. So- Mora! Mora! Laura! I didn't even think Mora was a real name, but <laughs> also in high school, there were three girls in one of my classes with the same exact name, and we had to go by nicknames, so I wanted to know, uh, what's a similar name or a time a name kind of ruined your day? 616-600-0957. Porta Potty Drew, you said that a name ruined your entire summer? Yeah, I was in uh, fifth grade, and there was another kid with the same name, just a uh, different middle initial. Uh-huh. And uh, apparently he had to go to summer school, but the school said that I had to go because they thought I was him, and they didn't figure it out until the end of the summer session. Oh, that's like being sent to jail for someone else's crime when you're that age. Yeah, it was horrible. I was not the best in school, but I didn't think I was that bad, but... I was going to say, did your parents or anybody else like, wait a minute, minute. I don't think our son should be in summer school. Yeah, they just kind of went along with it, because that's what the school said I had to do, and (laughs) I... <laughs> oh, well, true. Drew, you know what? You're you're uh, you're a smart cookie, so we're glad you went to that summer yeah, school. Yeah, I mean, at least you got a little bit more schooling, but geez, what a ruining of a summer. I'm so sorry that happened to you, Drew. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't the best, but it turned out okay. We're Big Joe and Laura. It's Mix 95.7, and we're playing Laura Can't Lose. Today, representing Zealand, she's back again. It's Daphne, and now she's got a chance if she walks away a winner, she'll have $40 of those Michigan lottery tickets. Good morning, Daphne. How you feeling? I'm feeling good again. I'm feeling optimistic for you. You already built up the jackpot a little bit more. I see what you did there. Let's see if you can build it up more or beat me this time. Blah, blah, blah. Daphne, tell her to get out. (laughs) Get out, please. Thank you. (laughs) <laughs> Enough of the pleasantries. You want to win. We know how this is. Okay, you're going to get one minute to answer five questions. You could pass if you don't know the answer. We'll come back if time allows. A tie goes to Laura because Laura can't lose, but you could take her on again the next day, just like you are right now. Question one. How many pounds are in a ton? A thousand. Question number two. There's a snake in my boot is a famous line from what 1995 animated movie? Toy Story. Question number three. What is the name of Elvis Presley's Memphis home? What's it called? Uh, Pass. Question four. Whitney Houston went to the top of the music charts in 1992 with which Dolly Parton song? I Will Always Love You. Question five. What number did Detroit Lions legend Barry Sanders wear when he played? Oh, pass. Question three again. What is the name of Elvis Presley's Memphis home? Oh, my goodness. Um, Graceland. Graceland. Question number five. What number did Detroit Lions legend Barry Sanders wear? I'm going to just guess 28 because I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to bring Laura in. Laura! La, 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 Laura! Okay. Let's do this. All right, Laura, there's a chance you can beat Daphne in Zealand today. She only got three rights, so if you get three, you tie. Any more than that, you're a winner. All right, let's see how I do. Question one, how many pounds are in a ton? Uh, A thousand? Wow, what's wrong with everybody? No, you both got that wrong. It's 2,000. Oh. (laughs) Uh, 
That, that does sound like a ton more. <laughs> okay, well, congrats. Tie game, 0-0. Zero, zero. Question two. There's a snake in my boot is a famous line from what 1995 animated movie? Toy Story. That is correct. 1-1 one, one going into question three. What is the name of Elvis Presley's Memphis home? Graceland. That is correct. It is now 2-2 two, two going into question number four. Whitney Houston went to the top of the music charts in 1992 with which Dolly Parton song? I will always love you. That is correct. 3-3 three, three, going into question number five. So if I get this right, I win. If I get this wrong, we tie again. Yes. Oh, no. Okay, no pressure. Question five. What number did Detroit Lions legend Barry Sanders wear when he played? I don't know. Uh, I'm going to guess 95. 95. Okay. Uh, no, incorrect. Oh. You both got that wrong. <laughs> Shame on you. Put some respect on his name. Uh, Barry's number was 20. Oh, I was, that, oh. that was nowhere near anything I was going to guess. I was like, well, maybe it would have been the other one. I, no. I don't know how we slid our way into this one, but we have another tie. And if you'd like to come back again, Daphne, you have a chance to get 45 bucks worth of the Michigan lottery tickets. Totally. We all like to blame ourselves and other people, but whose fault is it really? It's Big Joe and Laura, Mix 95.7 Grand Rapids Best Mix. Uh, he writes in and says, my wife gained over 130 pounds over the past two years, and I'm being told that it's my fault. Hmm. Yeah. She says that I'm enabling her poor dietary choices when I go to get food items that she wants, whether it's fast food or sweets. In truth, I constantly state my opinion about her likely poor choice of food. But in the end, if she doesn't heed my advice, then she'll overindulge either way. I don't offer to go get her something. Or if I don't go to offer to get her something, she tells me that I clearly don't care about her anymore. And I normally cook for the two of us and include at least one type of vegetable and she won't eat it. So just to put it in perspective, I like to drink. I like to think that I am responsible for how much I drink. My, if my wife buys me alcohol, I'll never blame her for when I over drink. So will she ever take responsibility for her actions and her overindulgence? And how can I help her overcome her poor eating habits? We would love to hear from you. 616-600-0957. I feel like, Laura, that this is definitely majority of this is on the, the woman that is overweight and that's eating. And this is coming from a guy that has lost 100 pounds, put 100 pounds back on three times in his life. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Like when you're a child, if you got a kid that's really overweight, I would say, yeah, even if the kid asked for it, like, well, you're the one giving it to him. And in this case, he is saying, I think you said, making food options that are healthy for and she doesn't want it yeah it is ultimately she's making the choice to put that food in their mouth but also like you're partially you're not majority but you're still going out and buying it you're being an enabler this is just food what if this was uh alcohol or drugs oh absolutely you know as someone who has gained almost 100 pounds over the last year it, i i've struggled with some of this too because i used to have an amazing metabolism i could eat a whole box of oreos and it wouldn't affect me and <laughs> metabolism? now i'm in the same room as the box of oreos and i gained five pounds so like i understand where this woman's coming from sometimes it just spirals and gets out of control and it's very easy to be mad and point your finger at everyone around you but at the end of the day you've got to kind of back up and say hey what can I do to change things? Maybe he could start doing things like, I'm only going to have healthy snacks. So if you want to have a snack with me, let's do this together. Or, hey, I'm going to start going to the gym. Why don't you come with me? And just uh, kind of subtly encouraging her because that's kind of what my husband has done with me recently of just like, hey, we're going to do this. I'm not going to buy these things for you anymore because you're complaining about how you don't feel good about yourself. And, you know, it makes a difference. Sometimes it's hard to take that pivot, but you've got to almost be like a parent in a sense and just we're doing this, and if you want to come along, cool, but if you're going to make those other choices, you're making them for yourself, and I'm doing this because I love you. That's why I'm not buying you the sweets anymore. Yeah, kind of uh, going on top of that, it doesn't necessarily mean that your cravings are going to go away if you don't have it in the house, but guess what? You can't eat it if it's not in the house. Exactly. I, it does that's make my a key big to difference. success. If it's there, I'm going to eat it. Yeah, I've, I've pretty much banished all cookies and fun things from my house, too, for that reason. So we want to know whose fault is it that she gained weight? 616 600 0957 or shoot us a DM at the Mix 957 app. Who's at fault that she gained the weight? Hey, it's Big Joe and Laura on Mix 957. We got a DM from a listener today saying that his wife had gained over 130 pounds over the course of two years, and he's being told that it's her fault. And the reason why is like, well, you go out and buy the junk food, and that is probably part of it, but 
Isn't it also kind of her fault that she's eating that? 616-600-0957. Kate and Holland, what do you think? Is this woman to blame for her weight gain or should her husband not be giving her treats and snacks? I mean, when it comes down to it, it's up to her. Eating poorly is as much of an addiction as alcoholism is as much of an addiction as a, a drug addiction. It could be a, a mental condition. I mean, as someone, I'm literally on my way to the gym right now, um, who's a postpartum mom of two and would eat my feelings, you have to be able to commit to a lifestyle change. You don't just gain weight overnight. You don't just lose weight overnight. You have to commit to a lifestyle change and eating right. And I don't know if there's any because his criticism is being poorly received. Um, and I don't know if he's making the healthiest choices either. Modeling healthy eating is the best thing you can do, and if she's unwilling to make a change, sneak unhealthy foods anyway. So really it just comes down to her and maybe finding what the root of the issue is of why she's wanting to eat all this junk food. Okay, those are great points. Uh, Real follow-up question to that. What are you working out today, like in the gym? What are we doing? Um, Today is going to be arms and upper body. I go to the best gym in West Michigan. It's called Rob Keen's Body Shop, um, and we (laughs) have – Awesome cardio training, but as well as strength training. So it's a focus on the full body, full spectrum health. Do they do any kind of car work? I need a new Johnson rod. (laughs) (laughs) Nope, just just the body shop, just on your human body. (laughs) (laughs) Well, good for you for actually getting out there working out, because trust me, as a a fellow postpartum mom, it is hard. And I, I applaud you for getting out there and doing what you need to do to feel good about yourself, Kate. Amen. Have a great workout, Kate. Thanks, Kate. Thank you. Y'all have a great day. Brenda, should she hold herself accountable or is her husband to blame for this weight gain? She absolutely needs to hold herself accountable because nobody can force you to eat anything. You know, like it's not like he's like, here, eat all this. And she can't she can't blame him. I mean, I had bariatric surgery a few years ago. I know what it's like to be morbidly obese and I know everything that I had to do. And it was my responsibility. Well, I'm glad that you at least you were accountable for yourself and you did that. And hopefully maybe she'll do the same thing as you. Yeah, she it's it's absolutely on her. He doesn't really have a whole lot to do with it, except for, you know, the codependency and everything. And of course, there's that there's that give in that happens there. So, well, hey, thank you so much for the call. We appreciate you. Have a good day. You too.